aime bien le verre, mais on quitte le verbe pour faire bonne chair. Venez, venez de par le monde dans notre pays tout à bord. Yeah. And also there is Susan uh, Eisenhower. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh. And uh, we, we... So, uh, Maureen, you are on. Are you ready? You can trust me, I'm a lawyer. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> assistant. <laughs> I heard those words before. <laughs> assistant TV. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I don't that. know what I'm doing holding that. <laughs> I am so grateful to be here today, walking among heroes. This is, this is my idea of going, dying and going to heaven. <laughs> um, and in the theology that I hold dear, when God breathed the fire of life into the dust that was to be man, he also breathed and imbued in his soul a spark of freedom. Tyrants since the dawn of creation, have attempted to stifle and smother that spark of freedom. And as long as evil exists in the form of tyrants and ter terrorism, the price of freedom will be a life and death struggle. In the Colosseums of Rome, on the steppes of Russia, in the concentration camps of Europe, in the rice paddies of China, on the jungle floor of Vietnam, in the deserts of Iraq, in the mountains of Afghanistan and the beaches of Normandy, lie the bodies and bones and dust of countless millions, martyrs to freedom, lives that have been forfeited to an evil tyranny whose desire to ruin and rule has scorched the souls and extinguished the lives of countless millions of all races and creeds. Innocent lives are once again being crushed beneath ruthless murderers who slaughter innocents and reign through terror and anarchy under the cover of demonic ideology or religion. The last free society founded in liberty and God still exists a thread of hope in the fabric of a world replete with tyrannies toward man and treasons toward God. We are still free because men of honor and courage whom we commemorate today deeply believed that the defense of liberty is a noble cause. How noble that cause, how ignoble that end. You and these men who rest in hallowed glory, once again preserved for ourselves and generations to come, our precious and hard-won freedoms. We live and gather today here as free people because you men of honor and courage deeply believe that the defense of, the defense of liberty is a noble cause. We are here today to pay tribute to you men who sacrificed others that we might live free. You men who regretted that you had but one life to give to your country. These men we honor today, ordinary men with extraordinary courage, who were called upon to do exceptional things. Thank God you were up to the mark. Over nine million of the Americans who died and were not repatriated rest in glory at Saint Laurent above the battlefield of Omaha Beach. Greater love has no man than this, that he forfeit his life for his fellow man. Heroes were everywhere you looked. Giants rose out of relative obscurity to cast long shadows across this land. Strangers from all walks of life suddenly caught the crosswire of war, caught in the crosswire of war, but their lives put their lives on the line to preserve the lives of others. Most of them remain nameless to us, but their undaunted faces are engraved forever upon our hearts. You heroic men successful, succeeded in breaching the Third Reich's seemingly impregnable defenses, leading the way to the liberation of Europe in its darkest hour, in a war that ultimately took the lives of over an estimated 50 million people. This massive heroic assault on Nazi-occupied France slowly turned the darkness back, and the spark of freedom was rekindled. Heroism, said Philip Brooks, is to stand held only by the invisible chain of higher duty, and so standing to let the fire creep up to the heart. In a world where rock stars, athletes, superstars, and athletes and celebrities have been elevated to hero status, the lessons of true heroism are here. 
Such acts of selfless devotion are nearly beyond our imaginations. They evoke a vision of altruism we hope we are all capable of sustaining. Unfortunately, many of our heroes never returned home, but we have richly received the blessings they gave us daily. Heroes inspire others with their bravery, their compassion, their strength, their character, and their sacrifice. Unheralded and largely unnoticed, they go about their lives of serving and protecting with responsibility and patient endurance and a sense of honor. They light the way for the rest of us to follow when times are dark. It is little wonder that the world seems so empty when they are gone. A 25-year-old Hungarian girl, the night before her death by firing squad, wrote, There are stars whose radiance is visible on Earth, though they have long been extinct. These are people whose brilliance continues to light the world, though they are no longer among the living. These lights are particularly bright when the night is dark. They light the way for mankind. Freedom lights the way for us. It lit the way for the soldiers of Omaha Beach, and it lights the way for our troops fighting in Iraq. It is the stirring beacon of hope that guides us all. Among all of the hopes and desires that I've ever encountered in rich or poor, peasant or president, healthy or ill, they all had but one desire, to be left in peace, to be free. In 1956, a man who fought the tyranny of Russia stood on the st square in Budapest and shouted to the multitudes, shall we free men be or slave? Choose the lot your spirit craves. Citizens of these United States who had never heard these words, believing in the cause of liberty, volunteered to go fight in far distant lands with strange sounding names, Vietnam, Korea, Laos, Cambodia, Normandy, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Thousands have sacrificed and are still sacrificing in service to that spark of freedom that we might enjoy its benefits. We have a responsibility to those who fought so nobly and sacrificed so dearly. If those who have sacrificed themselves for the cause of liberty are truly to be honored, then we who have not sacrificed we who have not served enough, we who have not benefited from that, we who have benefited from that sacrifice, also have a duty and responsibility to serve that spark of freedom. As eternal vigilance ensured the freedom we enjoy, we must in turn be sure that we are diligent and hard at work in the vineyards of liberty. Loyalty to a cause, to a country, to a service is not a one-way street. Those who serve a cause, a country, a service, deserve the loyalty of those whom they serve. It's the only action to take. It's the only Christian thing to do. Maurice Renault and all you others here, don't, it, and, and, and all the many others who serve today and are also not here, don't labor in the vineyards of liberty for remuneration or material benefits, not even for the adulation of an audience. They labor because they feel a debt to pay to those who sacrifice so dearly that they and their countrymen might live free. Our men today labor because they have a duty to perform. They have a duty to see that their fellow Amer Americans continue to live free. This is not a political decision, although po politicians are involved. This is a moral decision, an ethical and a spiritual decision. It is a decision based on equity and fairness and justice, on duty, honor, and loyalty. If we are to enjoy the fruits of liberty emblazoned with sacrifice in our Constitution and Declaration of Independence, paid for the, by the man in uniform, sanctified by the man on the cross, then we all have the same duty and responsibility to see that those who gave their lives might rest in peace knowing that the land that they defended is still free. May we continue to live up to our responsibility. Thank you. I brought a book today.
I, I brought a book today because I wanted to give it to Bob Murphy. <laughs> and this, this is something, how to renew you, Bob. <laughs> As you know, I, I write health books. This is yeah. my 17th. I've written 19. This is my 17th book, Bob. I wanted you to have it. Yeah, yeah. How to renew you. Live your life again because you're a shining example of everything I just spoke about. I need it. <laughs> Stay I beside her, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, dear. I wanted Thank to give you. it to you before it was too late. Yes, okay. I want to make a special presentation in the name of the C47 Club. And I want to make a presentation for the services which Maureen Kennedy uh, Salaman gave to the to the uh, American veterans, and this is a medal, which is a medal of the uh, commemoration of D-Day. So that's 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 it. Thank you. And we are very proud of you, Maureen. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you so much. Good. You know, someone asked me why I come every year. And, and I said, do you see these fellows? I get an opportunity to rub shoulders with, with people who are willing to give all of their tomorrows so I could have today. And that's why I make such good use of today. Uh, now I've written 19 books. I edit a magazine. <laughs> I do a television show. And the reason that I make such good use of my every day is because it was bought with a price. These fellows here and the men you see here are the ones that paid the price. And so I would bid you all to leave and make very good use of every day because it was bought with a very precious price. And, and you paid the price. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.